morning. Apologies for the wind noise, there's not a lot I can do about it. And welcome to Toddington Railway Station on the Gloucestershire and Warwickshire Preserve Railway. I'm not actually here to look at trains, we actually saw a steam train in the beginning of part two of uh, these slightly shambolic shuffles, but uh, we are here for the MG40 event which um, is just over there and uh, we look forward to it very much we might just uh, climb up these steps and go the other way and then we can uh, start our proper shambolic shuffling unfortunately there might be instances where I fall over there might be incorrect information there might be interruptions by things I'm afraid that's just the way that it goes on this channel. The MG40 event is of course celebrating the 40th anniversary of post Abingdon MGs, i.e. the ones that were made after the Abingdon factory closed in 1980, which will be the MG Metro onwards. Right, let's negotiate our way down these, down these steps and then we will have a look at some cars. Lloyd Vivian Consulting stickers, t shirts, and mugs are available by clicking the link to the Google form in the video description below. Go Gloucestershire Warwickshire Steam Railway, and we are out into the field. There will be some cars here that were in attendance yesterday. This is, of course, is part three. Parts one and two were yesterday. So if there is duplication, then... Well, I don't apologise, really, because it's not too much of a problem for those who <laughs> haven't seen the first two parts anyway. But I think this car wasn't here yesterday. 1986-7 MG Metro. This is a Mark II. The addition of that is lovely. We've seen this uh, MG Master of Turbo before. This is for sale. As uh, Mr. Bill from the Fuel Power Channel says, this could be yours. See, uh, fish is trying to keep cool. Very, very nice. It's the S80 1990 registration. 2003 Rover 75. I'm just going to have to check the rev counter to make sure we can talk about it. Yes, we can. Excellent. No torpedo badges on this one on the cells, so I don't actually know what engines in that, but uh, very nice anyway. Could be a Connoisseur or something. Oh, another MG Maestro Turbo. The first of well, second of many will probably be seeing today. Someone's fitted a different type of repeater lens to that one. Get 8990. Typical sort of colour of the period, of course. Very, very nice wheels. Another MG Metro. This has got the earlier style wheels on it. Uh, those would be for a Mark 1, although this is a Mark 2 as well. 87, 88 registration. M G B G T V eight, I be do believe. Be about the right era for it as well, actually, on an N. Uh, yes, yeah, 74, 75. I think they were made for like 73 to 76 or thereabouts. I could be wrong. Ooh. <laughs> this is going to be exciting, viewers. Mm -hmm. Dark green. MGR V8 with a beige leather interior and wood. Mm. <laughs> I do like a nice beige leather interior, viewers. And that was 94 95 registration. They made them from late 92 to about 1995. And we've got some other ones here as well. Is this a Japanese spec one, viewers? Excellent. 
So this is a uh, yeah, it's a Japanese spec one. Interesting. It doesn't actually specify the uh, uh, the gear of uh, this one. So there we go. Night fire red, of course. More boat lover interior goodness. And there is the 3.9 litre V8. Which will be about rotating pulleys. More MGR V8 goodness, more boat lever interiors. It's like a blue colour, that one. About the sort of right era for the personal plate, that's a 9293 plate, so they're about the right era for that. We'll never want of these dark green ones. And another one. Viewers, I don't mind if I do. That is rather nice. Rather nice indeed. It's hard to pick a favourite because uh, they're all so good. Oh, we've got even more here. Oh, viewers. We're off to a strong start today, aren't we? A very strong start, particularly with all that wood. Yes, please. I don't know why, viewers, but I'm sort of finding myself drawn more to this one here. I don't know why. Despite the fact we, we do like the dark green ones, we also like dark blue. And this one is very nice, viewers. Right. I'm going to have to go and... Uh, Calm my excitement somewhat, but I can't really because we've got more MG Metros here. This is an uh, early Mark II one actually. It's on a C, so 85, 86. Mark II came in, I think October 84. So this is a uh, this is a Mark I here. Um, 83, 84 plate. Different dash. That's a non-standard wheel, by the way. And uh, just a 1300. That exhaust, though, I think that might produce more than standard. I think it was 72 horsepower they produced for it as standard. And Metro van, we've seen that. That is uh, one of the standard vans with. Uh, well, it's been made into a. Uh, it's been made into a MG Metro again. It's one of these ones on the cusp of 1990, 89, 90. Ooh, MG Metro Fabriot. It's like Crayford or something. I know, top hat conversions. I have seen a Metro Cabrio before. By that I mean this sort of well based on a Mark 1 Metro rather than the Rover Metro. But I've never seen one of these. Only two left in use. Wow. That is very rare then. Excellent. I think, I think we uh, have some more green cars with possible bait leather interiors over here so we will have to walk in this direction and I was right and I think the last RV8 was made in 1995 so this will be a, a late registration if it's on a, if it's on a P so it'll be about 96 I think with I think with these they were quite expensive and they took a little while to uh, to sell them out so it's not unusual if it was on a later registration First of many, many, many MGTFs here. And yes, dark green, beige leather interior. Very nice viewers. Very nice indeed. That, by the way, is a personal plate, so who knows what year it is. This one's also a personal plate, although that is probably about right for the viewer of the car, as is this one. So an TF-135 with the hard top, part made leather interior. Again, I don't know what year that is because of the personal plate. It's also got different rear lights on it. This is a TF-160. It's got a body kit on it, this one. Got a little friend in there as well. Is that a ring-tailed labour? Answer the comments section below, viewers. 
There we are, Pride of Ownership. It is a 2004 as well, that's it. It was a Spark, okay. Yeah, special edition. This is an LE500. This is a, one of the continuation cars made after 2008. Uh, from knockdown kits, from over China, but assembled at Longbridge. They are very slightly different from the earlier cars. There's just some very minor differences. One of them is the N-Series engine rather than the K-Series. The N-Series is uh, what well, claims to sort of cure the head gasket failure issue. Like this one as well, RX-59. This is actually not um, the LE500, which is the standard one. This, I think, is the... If I get, get, this, uh, get this right... The 85th anniversary edition, I think that one would be. Yeah, it is. Just say 85 on it. So yeah, 2009 to 10. Contrast to this, this is a very early TF on an O2 plate. Which is a one to 160 as well. Another base different here with wood. Excellent. Like that kind of thing, yes. Right, some more cars here that we saw yes yesterday. This is a 115. You can tell straight away by the unpainted door handles and mirrors. Mind you, they are still a lot of fun, even if it's a 115. It doesn't really matter. It's still brilliant. Let's go over to the uh, 635 register, because I think there's a couple of cars here that weren't here yesterday. I can't remember if we've seen this before. Yes, we have, and we can't talk about that one. This one we've seen yesterday, that's come from Scotland. 2021 2022 MG3 exclusive. Mango, let's see. I can't remember if it's the name of the dealer or something else. Yeah, it must be Mango, let's see. Of course, the uh, local dealer Bayless from Gloucester are here. Seen their cars actually yesterday. Uh, would have been in part one. So we won't uh, cover those. Ooh, trophy Yellow ZR from 2004. It's a preface of this one. Seen this MG6 safety car. More ZR action here. and 160. There's lots of 160s here today actually viewers. This is a, another pre facelift one. 2002 to 3. Another ZR160 belong to Mr Dunlop. I think this is a 2005 actually this one. It could be an 04. I think it's a 2005. Another ZR160 this time with three door. Uh, this one is in I think Firefrost Red. And we will uh, take a look at the front. Let's do a look at the front. Here we go. It's one of uh, one of two um, MG Expresses that are here. Let's make sure that this one, yes, it's got the K Series engine. In fact, this is another 160. I think this was the fastest van in production, and this one would have been made in late 2003. This is a 2001. ZT 190, what was registered in 2002. It's one of the first ones off the line, actually. Um, for some reason, it stuck around for ages before they sold it. I don't know why. Just make sure we're okay with this one, dears. Because as the Mayor of London and his friends around the country say, we can't talk about diesels on this channel. That one's okay, though. And the ZT260, saw this yesterday, with the uh, Ford V8 engine. This has also had some kind of wide body kit put on it. And uh, next power, sort of front bumper. Same engine as in this uh, 75 V8, very late 75 V8. Obviously most of these were auto, I think all the 75 V8s were auto actually.
2002 MGTF with the, the rare red interior. Most of them were black. This isn't a car I've had on my channel, but uh, this one is one of two in the same family. And the uh, other one, the 2004 TF115, we have had on my channel. Like this uh, TF135 from 2003, it belongs to Constable Bailey, who uh, is about to have even more cars on the channel. Let's tell him he's left his keys in the car. Otherwise, uh, might, things might happen. Yeah, both excellent cars to drive. This one's owned by a gentleman who runs Instagram called HPR Photo. Never one of these ZRs. Never 160. There we are. It's actually in very, very good order, this one. There's a little bit of bubbling stare somewhere. I think a dense here and there, but it's not too bad, actually. Unfortunately, this particular ZR, or rather the, ZR, the uh, Energy Express, we can't talk about that, viewers, because we don't talk about diesel on this channel, as uh, you can see from the merchandise that I have on the dash of my car. Corporal Macklin's 2018 MG3 Form Sport is here, along with uh, another... MG3 here. This is the 90th anniversary edition. Uh, very similar to the three style plus or lux. So you can see it's actually got the 90th anniversary seats in it. Uh, 90th anniversary of MG, I think that was 2014. Because uh, two years time is the 100th anniversary of MG. So we've seen uh, some of these before. MGHS all the way from Scotland. I think this is the uh, exclusive auto with red interior. Yeah, it is exclusive auto, because only exclusive auto has a super sport button. But it'll have the uh, electric tailgate as well then. 2020 to 2021 MG ZS EV. 2020 MG ZS EV, they're both in Pimlico Blue. I actually attended the launch of the MG ZS EV in July 2019. In central London it's about exactly three years ago and uh, the car I found a walk around of was identical to these two in Pimlico Blue 2020 MG ZS facelift one litre exclusive auto which we had on the channel actually quite soon after we only purchased it uh, we've already seen this one several times hello sir um, 2016 or possibly later, um, MG GS. I don't think I've, I've seen a GS at a car show yet, to be honest. This one is exclusive. Let's see if it's the auto. No, it's the manual. Even so, it's got the nicer sort of centre console with the bits of leather in it. These are actually quite rare. They only imported 3,000 GSs. I think there was some kind of regulation that said they couldn't import any more. So, there we go, you don't see many of them. More headlining action going on. There's headlining going on yesterday and headlining going on today as well. There we go. Very unusual, unusual colour views, but we have to move on past that one because of, um, yes, ultra low emission zones and clean air zones and general government interference. This one's okay though. It's a petrol ZR. This one's had um, it's got a new dials put in it. It's a it's a petrol, but the, the dials are totally different to this one. So lots of work going on over here. Yeah, it's a very late one with a uh, facelift and those purple wheels. Right. Um, yeah, let's go uh, let's go this way and uh, have a look at these on this row here. When I was at Pride of Longbridge back in April, these ZRs were just all over the place. There was tons of the things. And yeah, here you go, 2006, it's one. Two thousand and four to five. MG ZR, this is a one twenty, it's this fire frost red. I've actually been offered this for review, so uh 
In fact, you see it on my channel quite soon, viewers. Hmm, it's actually got the uh, leather interior. It's got quite big wheels on it. I don't know what those are off, actually. I'm not sure those are standard ones. Maybe they're like an optional upgrade. And we've got twin pipes on here, so that will probably be a little bit faster than the standard um, ZR120. More Fire Frost Red here. Let's make sure we check that rev counter. Yep, that's fine. South Staffordshire and North Birmingham and Geonis Club. Excellent. So it's a, well, it's a very late one. It's March 2005. It's less than a month before it all went terribly wrong. MGB. This one will be uh, 70 to 71. See the uh, kind of earlier, sort of mid-period actually this one would be. Another midget here, sort of similar to the midget that I drove on the channel last year, over 68 midget. This is a little bit different though, this is a 71 to 72 on a K. So the grill and things will be a little bit different on this one. Right, make sure I don't trip over anything here, viewers. There are little guy ropes and things here. 2003 MGTF. 2005 MGTF 135. So this was another late one. Yeah, March 2005. 2003. Quite rightly sort of specifying the every 80th anniversary on, on here of the company. See the 100th birthday is not too far off now. Or an NGF. Lots, lots of friends here today viewers. Look, we've got, got grommets here, <laughs> Morris Bears. That's got some unusual Recaro seats in it. I've not seen those before on an MGF. Very late MGF here, 2001 only. I wonder if this is a trophy or something. No. I mean, trophies generally were marked out as being such. What's really weird is that the F and the TF are very similar from the back. So you can look at the front really to uh, to know. And this is this is still an F. So it's a, I think the last of these they made would have been on a late 51 plate. Because the first TF registered, I think, January, February 2002. This one though is a 52. So more standard interior. Actually, no, it isn't more standard interior. More standard interior would be just all sort of black cloth. Just got the airbag in it, so it is um, maybe a higher specification or more options. 1992 thousand MGF with a base level interior. Is that 95 red or fire frost red viewers? Answers in the comments section below. Oh, another one of these LE500. So yeah, 2009 to 10 LE500. Still made at uh, one bridge from the kits. Just well, one or two trains, including the better engine, or supposedly so. Another TF, earlier one. Nice red accent on the steering wheel there. 2003 MGTF again with this sort of suede stuff in the interior there. This colour is more sort of common, I think, on the uh, sort of the ZS's of the era, really. Don't know what colour this is. It's got blue interior, this TF. Chap there who was so much fun it uh, scared him to death. 2002 to 3. Oh, this will be, uh, be an MGF with the 143 VVC engine. It's a pre facelift one. So that plate, which is 97.98 to be about right. Another one of these TS. This is Fire Frost Red. When you go to these shows, you do want to see a lot of TFs. Seem to, most of them seem to be in preservation now, despite the fact that you can 
you could pick up a TF for under under a thousand pounds if you really want to. You probably won't want to because you end up doing lots of work on them. But the best example is worth an awful lot of money. We have one with a sort of suede interior here. It's very nice condition. Uh, what's the name? Uh, Starlight Silver. Starlight Silver, isn't it? Starlight Silver. Yeah. Starlight Silver. Only had one owner. Twenty-four thousand miles on the clock. Beautiful. You can't have that one. You absolutely can't, thank you. 1999 to 2000 MGF. That's got the, ooh, that's 75th anniversary on there. Again, a late preface lift with the uh, orange indicators. Yes, viewers. MGX Power SV. Some of these actually might be SVRs. I did a walk around of uh, one of the only, I think it was sort of, sort of like five or seven SBR automatics in the country, which would have been, um, yes, uh, last year. I was, you know, I was at Summit Garage in Dudley. I wasn't able to drive it due to insurance reasons, which is a bit of a pain because I would like to have a go at one of these at some point. Uh, personal plates all around, so I don't know exactly. So I was, oh, this is, a, this is an SBR. Very nice. One of 16 ever produced. Uh, so this is, I think, a 2004. Fiat Coupe rear lights, Fiat Punto front lights, all kinds of sort of uh, little bits and pieces taken off various Fords and MG and Austin Rover models even. This is just the uh, standard SB. Standard's really not a suitable word, perhaps, for these because they are very very special cars indeed they are absolutely wonderful <laughs> just to bring up something like this the platform is based on a car called the Cavale Mangusta or Data Massa Mangusta which is uh, I think produced about 1999 um, MG then bought the rights to it and they were I think part assembled in Italy then finished off in Longbridge something like that so we do have some Italian parts on them this is an SVR as well, just manual. I don't think I've ever seen so many of these together. I've seen three at one show before, but not so many together. SVR. Yeah, we still haven't got an elusive um, sort of auto on this. I don't know exactly what age right, but this one on an 08. It must be one of the continuation cars. There are a couple of these, there weren't many. Um, because production of these not finished in about 2005 and everything else, but there were a couple of cars registered after that. This must be one of them on an 08. But superb to see these. These are worth a fair penny now. I think sort of for a standard SV, probably looking around £45,000 at least. SVRs, 60, 70, whatever, something like that. Another trophy blue TF. Seem very popular today. Right, just got a little area to finish before we finish. Uh, before we finish part one, we will go to part two at some point. I'll go and uh, sit down and have a drink before we do that because it is rather warm today. Ooh. This uh, Andy Metro 1300 has had some non-standard seat covers put in it. So it's a van. So it's the second um, MG Metro van we've seen. Excellent. And one of these kind of 1980s aftermarket <laughs> sort of uh, reflector bars put on it in the back. Oh, another MG Maestro. Yes, please, yes. These are the right wheels for it. Um, 1990 to 1991, 2 litre EFI. I actually did a walk around on one of these. Uh, it was a green one at Summit Garage at the same time I did the uh, um, the SVR Auto. It's pretty rare now, they're very desirable. Well, another Andy Metro 1300. This is a 1990, so it's a very late one. It's very, very nice condition. Got some good cassettes in the cassette holder down there. This is a Metro 1.1C, viewers. Very kind of 
She has your seat flapping it. Yeah, it's a 1.1 C. So this is a sort of a, for people who like the twin cam channel. And this is the kind of thing you like. And there's Knuckles there with a Game Boy and a videotape of Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles, which it was in this country. Although not in America, of course. Right, well, it seems like we've got plenty to film in part two. So that's what we will do. We'll come back and uh, film some stuff in part two. So thank you ever so much in... No, not part two, sorry. Part four. So thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video, leave a comment below. And uh, we'll see you again soon for more MG-flavoured action.